Okay then, so now we have our database real-time listener set up. So we know we're getting data every time something's added to the database and also when we first load the page as well. Now what I'd like to do is output that data to the web page instead of all this dummy data right here. We don't need any of that anymore. So first of all, let's go over to our index page and scroll up a little bit where we have all of this dummy content. Now, I'm just gonna delete most of it. I'm gonna leave one recipe because we'll need that template. And in fact, what I'll do is I'll copy this template right here ready because we're gonna use that shortly. Now then, let me save this and go to database. And what we're gonna ultimately do here is call a function which is gonna output our data when we get it from the database to the DOM. So this function is gonna be called render recipe. We've not made this yet, but we will do in a second. And it's gonna take in two arguments. So the first argument is gonna be the data that we want to output. And we know we can get that using this change.doc.data. So we'll pass that through change.doc.data. So we're passing the data through as the first argument. The second argument is gonna be the ID of the document because we're gonna link the ID of the document to the template that we output. Because in the future, if we want to then delete something from the DOM, we can query based on that ID. So we'll pass that in as well. And we get that by saying change.doc.id. So we're calling this function and we're passing these two things in the data and the ID. Now we've not created that function yet, so we'll do it inside UI. Okay, because this is all to do with the UI, right? And what we're doing now is adding stuff to the DOM. We're interacting with the UI. So let's now do a comment to say render recipe data. Okay, so this function was called render recipe. That's what we invoke right here, render recipe. So let's say render recipe right here. And this is equal to a function, right? Remember, it took in two arguments, the data and the ID. So let's take those in as well here, data and then ID. Okay. So then inside this function, what do we want to do? Well, first of all, we want to create some kind of HTML template with the data embedded into it. So what I'm gonna do is use a template string, which is an addition to the JavaScript ES6 specification. And what that allows us to do is output data directly into a string. So I'm gonna store this in a constant called HTML, and I'm gonna set it equal to a template string. Now, to create a template string, what we have to do is use backticks. So backticks on my keyboard are just below the escape key. So let me do this right here, two backticks like that. And then let's go down to the next line. And what I'm gonna do is paste in the HTML that I copied right here. So let me paste that in and then scoot this along a little bit and this as well. Okay, so what we're saying is when we receive some kind of change and it's of added type, then what we're gonna do is call this function and pass in the data and the ID to this function every time we get a new document that we want to add to the DOM. So we're calling this function and we're taking in the data and the ID and we're saying, okay, well, we want to output a new recipe to the DOM for this document. So what I'm gonna do is generate some template, which we're ultimately gonna to output to the DOM. So before we output it, we want to just update the actual details inside it. Things like the title right here and the ingredients. So let's get rid, first of all, of this title and output the actual title. Now, how do we output a variable inside a template string. Well, the way we do it is by using dollar sign and then curly braces like so, and then the variable name. So we wanna output the data and we want the title property on that data. Because remember over here, this is the whole data, this object, and we have a title property and an ingredients property. So we're outputting the title right here and we're doing that from this data. The next thing we wanna do is output right here, the data, ingredients. So we'll say data dot ingredients. Okay, so now we're outputting both of those things. Now, I also want to output this ID in a couple of different places because this is going to make it easier later when we're either querying the database when we want to delete something or remove the entire thing from the DOM. 
So we're going to output this ID in two different places. The first place I'm going to put it in is the actual div wrapper for this new recipe. So I'm going to create a data attribute, data hyphen ID, and that is going to be equal to some kind of variable. So again, we need to do our dollar sign curly braces like so, and we want to output the ID right here, whatever we pass in here, which remember is just the ID of the document change. So we've done that right here. We also want to add the same thing to the delete button down here. So the icon, because when we come to delete something, if we click that on the page, then I want to immediately grab this ID so I can query the database to delete that document with the ID. Then when it's deleted, I want to delete the overall div that has that ID as well. So that's why we've put it in two different places here. We could do it just using this, but there'd be more kind of traversing the DOM. And I think it's just easier to output it in two different places. So now we have for each document that we want to output to the DOM, this bit of template. And now we need to take that and actually output it to the DOM. Now, where do we want to output it? Well, if we take a look in index, we want to output it inside this div right here called recipes, right? This is the class of it. So first of all, I'm going to delete this because this was the template we just used. We don't need that anymore and I'm going to save it. Then I want to get a handle from the JavaScript to this div with a class of recipes. So inside UI again, I'm just going to come to the top of the file and I'll say const recipes is going to be equal to documents dot query selector and we want to get the div with a class of recipes so that gets us a handle on that div now we want to append this html to that div so then let's now say recipes which gets us that div because we stored it in this constant then we want to say dot inner html and plus equals the html that we just created right here so this constant so what we're doing is taking this div and we're getting the inner HTML and adding this to it. So it's going to output it inside this div right here after the H6. OK. All right, then. So let us now save this and come over here. We're going to save this now as well. So hopefully when we run this in the browser, we should see those two things, which we do in the DOM. So because we're getting these two things as document changes back to our application, Inside our JavaScript for each one of those changes, remember, because we're cycling through each one, each one of them, they're both type added. We're calling this render recipe function. We're passing in the data and the doc ID. And then in that render recipe function, we're taking in the data and the ID. We're creating this template and then we're outputting it to the recipes in the HTML. And that's happening twice, once for each document change, because there's two inside the database, these two. And that is why we see them right here. Now, if I refresh, you might notice a little flicker because it takes a second just to load them like that. So then now we are getting all of our data from the database. But notice if we go offline over here, I'm going to go to service workers offline and refresh then we can't actually access the data. We're not doing anything with offline at the minute and we don't see the page either. And that's because we commented out all of this stuff down here in the fetch event handler. So we're not caching assets anymore. So what we're going to do is talk about offline data using Firestore in the next video so we can start to enable this for the user.